Well, how's it going out there, campers? Welcome back to another Friday at 3 here in the studio for a little while longer. Uh, have to excuse us if you hear a bunch of noise on the other side of that wall. The new owners of this building are very busy constructing whatever. <laughs> I think they're building a wall and doing a, a, uh, a railing around the ceiling, I assume, for a, a paint booth or something like that. So they've been over there all week and they've been very busy. But we'll still uh, come in here and do this for a while, even with the background noise. It's not like I'm recording videos or something like that. How's everybody doing today? Did you have a good week? I hope so. Let's flip over and look at what I missed last week. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can hear all that, but... Uh... <laughs> we'll suffer our way through all this. <laughs> Oh, but before I get started on this, um, just want to remind you that we're still doing another giveaway. If you go to partzilla.com and look at just the opening page, it'll say enter to win. I believe that we're giving away an ATV. I don't want to call it a seat. It's more of a throne. And if you use John 9, 1, 2, 3, you get 100 bonus entries. Did I remember that correct, Hank? Hopefully y'all can't hear all that. <laughs> Or you can hear me over it. Oh, boy. I'll be glad when we're out of this building. Well, there is no we. There's just me. I'm it. Other than them. All right. Lo <coughs> Lloyd Wall had asked me last week, hey, man, how's it going? My question is, I have a 2000 Suzuki TL1000S, and the clutch release has lost the ball bearings. And the new one is probably, how can I fix, or what models does that interchange with? And, and I told him, you just go to the year making model and um, it'll show you what uh, other units that this will uh, work in. But that's really not going to change change the price now that I think about it, Lloyd. The, the price is the price. But I look at the makeup. Basically, you've got that roller bearing up front. Um, this is part of the push when you activate the clutch where it goes, in, uh, goes into the, uh, the springs and pushes against them. And then all the other bearing is just the needle bearing, and that's part of your clutch housing, uh, the clutch basket itself, which also has that uh, that main ring gear. Now, you don't have to buy that whole thing. <laughs> that bearing is available separately. And uh, you said it was pricey. You know, I looked at it, and price didn't scare me. So, yeah, especially on a 30-something dollar bearing, I wouldn't try to find something else to replace it other than OEM, especially something that specific. So... Not sure what other bearing you might have been talking about. Uh, if I'm if I'm not reading you correctly, you know, drop us another message on uh, either Instagram or on uh, Facebook, and Hank will get it over to me. And Hank, that's Lloyd Wall that was asking that question, like you didn't know already. All right, the next one comes from Mike's Trophy Truck. How do you repair the wire that breaks off less than one inch from the ECU plug? Oh, boy. <laughs> Is there a way you can pull the connection out of the plug and make it longer and then reinsert it back into the plug? Yes, you can do that. Um, but you'd still be extending it the same way, or if not, just putting on a new new plug. Now, there's different tools you have to ha have to have to get any of those teeny tiny little uh, plugs and or pins to release out of an ECU socket. And that is just not something you want to play with. The, everything is the tolerances are so small in there you better know what you're doing before you start messing around with it <sniffs> excuse me pollen or whatever is going around uh, around in the air today is killing me um if i were gonna if this if this was my machine i would break out a, a length of um, shrink wrap tubing pull back just enough that just that quarter inch that's left solder it together and then move the heat, the heat shrink over the end of the wire and solder it up now um i showed how to repair and a uh a harness things out of a bmw but showed you that technique for using a uh, solder and wire wrap so if you would reference that particular video in the playlist over at our youtube site and i can walk you through how to do that um yeah that'd be the way i'd go because yeah I'd, it's not so much the cost of the uh the harness it's what it takes to get it pulled out and then get it installed correctly. I mean, ask me how it went on the YXZ. It took me forever because uh, we did a frame on that one. 
All right, Sammy Denali, loved your KLX 110 videos. I was able to do a complete carburetor rebuild and it's running great. I uh, haven't had the same luck for my Suzuki DZR125. My problem is bikes only run, bike only runs on choke. All right, guys, everybody knows where this is going to go. I've looked at so many videos. Most videos lead me down the path of the idle jet. Hey, I cleaned everything on the inside, but no luck. So I decided to do a rebuild kit with new jets. Unfortunately, my issue still exists. What am I missing? Well, Sam, you're not actually missing anything. You can replace the jets, but on the other side of that jet, on that carburetor, it has to go through the carburetor body. And if things are gunked up further inside where you can't get anything in there, even by using the uh, cleaning solution and or an ultrasonic machine, sometimes it is just not going to break free. Uh, my suggestion would be to soak it in carb cleaner full strength, wash it out, and then try to blow it out using compressed air. If I still doesn't get it, well, you're really not going to have much of a choice except to replace the entire carburetor itself. But on a 125, it shouldn't be that expensive. I've told the story a couple of times before. When I was at the dealership level, we'd have a, uh, what was it in particular? A Recon um, 250 Honda. When they would come in for a carb clean, we would take the old carburetor off, throw it in the trash can, and then put on a new one because that was cheaper than spending two mechanic hours to clean the existing one and then put it back on. <laughs> that kind of defies logic, but hey, it was the truth. All right. Uh, payroll reminder. I'm good to go. <clears throat> Troy, all... all Allridge, we'll go with that. He's got a 99 TRX 450S when trying to adjust the fuel screw. I assume he's talking about the fuel air, air fuel screw. I can cl close the screw completely and the bike does not even drop uh, RPMs, it seems. What would cause the RPM, RPMs not to change at all? Well, you've got your, your air fuel screw on the side, but down at the bottom of the carburetor, if I've got the right unit, you'll have this large black knob and that is actually the the throttle stop for your particular unit, and that would that adjust your RPM. Now, you're really going to be able to hear an RPM change uh, messing around with the fuel air screw well, to a certain extent. If you open it up too far, yes. But um, in your case, if you're trying to get the RPMs to come down, you're you're adjusting the wrong adjustment. So it's that large black handle or not handle, but knob down at the bottom of the carburetor. If memory serves, it's been a little while. Honda's pretty consistent on their stuff. All right, Duck Rider. Hey, John, I have an 01 ZX7R with 25,000 miles. Whenever I pull the clutch in fully in first gear and give it a good rev, okay, the, the bike always wants to move forward a little bit. What could that be? Well, question for you. If you're pulling in your clutch, why are you giving it throttle? That would be my only question, I guess, if you're trying to do the launch. But what's happening is apparently your clutch is not adjusted correctly and it's not fully expanding out, giving those plates some um, freedom to rotate without actually engaging. So that there's, yeah, you're relieving pressure with the spring, but yours are still touching enough to where it's trying to kind of lurch forward. So it's not like you're pulling the clutch completely apart. I mean, you're just creating enough space to where there's enough slippage in there, and that's evidently not happening with yours. So you either need to, well, I can't remember off the top of my head if an 01 ZX7R is a clutch or a hydraulic clutch line or a uh, uh, just a regular clutch cable. So make sure it's adjusted correctly. And the only other thing I can think of that could be doing this, and we had another discussion with this a couple of weeks ago, is if you had, or with that many miles, you've replaced your clutch probably once or twice by now, make sure you go back with OEM. They've, there's aftermarket clutch kits out there and some of them are good and some of them are not so good. And you'll run into problems like this with them when they, they heat up, they start to swell and that changes the adjustment of the clutch, so on and so forth. OEM nine times out of 10 is the better way to go unless you're going with a race setup and you're looking for more grab. All right, um, we got two more left. Jasmine Zero had asked me, my 2018 Grom, know a lot about that one, comes out of gear after shifting, why? 
Oh, sounds like your transmission is getting a little tired. When you shift, you're actually moving a gear and the teeth are interlocking with the gear next to it. And if those teeth are worn, that lock will cause it to pop loose. So especially when they start getting worn down. So chances are they're your teeth, so to speak, are starting to get worn where the, uh, the gears are interlocking and it's releasing. That would be my initial guess on that. What can you do that uh, other short of uh, opening up the transmission and going through it? Maybe think about going with a little bit different oil. You maybe, maybe you're going with a fully synthetic. Maybe you should back off to a semi-synthetic, if not just a regular, um, just a generic type uh, oil instead. Maybe not make it quite so slippery in there to make it easier for it to hold on. Hey, it's worth a shot. Or it's certainly worth an oil change before you go through the pain of uh, splitting the cases on it. Dan Martin, I have a 400EX. Everybody owns one of these things. <laughs> Seems like it. And I was wondering if it would be necessary to change the jets out for the winter because it's harder to start in the summer. Hmm. Depending on how much of a temperature change is uh, going from summer to winter, I would say go ahead and do that because when it's winter, you're to leave, you're use your ingesting denser air and what does that mean that means you're not your amount of fuel is staying the same so in essence you're starting to lean your engine out so it would not hurt at all depending on how your how knife edge yours is jetted to uh, move up a size or two on your jet diameter to, to allow some more fuel in there during the winter just my two cents all right that catches me up from last week Let's see what we've got for today. Yes, they've uh, Partzilla friends down in Florida. Um, we we're giving away that uh, Kempex Nomad trunk, the ATV throne. Use code John9123 for 100 bonus entries. Like you can't read. But hey, just reading it out loud for those that are actually just listening and not, and not watching to the chat. Watching the chat. A Rialo Mike. Hello. How's it going, Mike? Hello to you too. Andy and Cali Moto 2015 Yamaha FJ09. Always like that bike. I have been experiencing some throttle lag when taking off in first gear. Okay. I've synced my throttle bodies. Good. And adjusted and lubricated my throttle cables. Is this a TPS issue? Possibly a TB TPS issue. Um, I thought the uh, FJ09 was a uh, throttle by wire. Or maybe I'm thinking of the uh, R6 and the R1. But yes, if it's a little bit sluggish um, off the line, it might know might not know exactly where the, uh, the throttle plates are. And that's giving it kind of false information, potentially. Um, if you've never done the uh, calibration before, I can't remember the uh, ohm load that you're looking for when it's at its zero point, so to speak, but I'm sure that's online. But if Andy, if you need me to, I can look up the, uh, the exact specs and I can um, forward them out to you um, if you need access to a service manual. I don't want, I can't do it for everybody, but you know, sometimes uh, I'll, I can make enough time to uh, send it out to a few folks. So Andy, if you will uh, reach out to um, Hank over at uh, either our Facebook or Instagram pages on the Instant Messenger. I'll see if I can hook up with you and, and uh, get that printed out for you. Sound like a deal? But yeah, sounds like this. Uh, you're correct on the uh, throttle position sensor. Uh, maybe a little bit out of whack. Marty Turner, I'm rebuilding my Polaris Sportsman 1000 XP and have reviewed your series more than a couple of times. It's been a ton of help. Well, you're welcome. Not a problem. Just wanted to say thanks uh, for the in-depth videos. Well, we appreciate that, Marty. Um, well, we have a, a weekly meeting with multimedia, and it's just kind of funny. Out of all the videos that we do, the, the ones that get the most views are either the really simple ones or the really, really involved engine builds. And we all, uh, we're all flattered by the fact that um, <laughs> some people will sit there, a lot of people will sit there and watch an entire engine build, the one in particular is our, um, good gosh, our uh, Raptor 700R, where we 
put all the different segments together into one video. It's an hour and 42 minutes long. And the watch time on that is unbelievable as far as one person sitting there. They'll let it play all the way through. <laughs> so, but yes, I'm glad that the, you have applied the, uh, the knowledge we're trying to convey and uh, you're, you're going to have a positive outcome. If you run into any issues, drop us a line. We are here to help. Christopher Miller. Hello, John. Remember that 2015 Razor 900 EPS that I did a top and rebuild on? Yeah. We got it, and now it won't uh, it won't start. Check the flywheel, Woodruff key, and CPS sensor, new ECU wire. Wow. We, yeah, Chris, we talked about this. That 636-2 code is the code for your crankshaft position sensor. And you replaced it, and you checked the wiring, and it still won't start and your flywheel and the Woodruff key. Oh, man, I'm floored on this one. You just about done it all. <laughs> How far away are you from me, Christopher? <laughs> I know you gotta be frustrated with it. Let me think on that one a little bit more. Come up, see if I can come up with anything out of the box. I mean, it's not like I don't have one to look at to see what could have gone wrong with uh, that engine going back in. When you go back and check your wiring, let's think about this for just a second. I, I ran into this when I did the, uh, the YXZ. A lot of your plugs, they look the same. And when you're trying to mess with a harness to the level that I did, sometimes you can plug into the wrong thing. When you went in to check your wiring, did you look at your color codes to make damn sure that that is the correct, um, the, the, the correct plug-in for your, for your crankshaft position sensor? Go triple check that and, and make sure. And in the meantime, I'll do a little bit more research, think, uh, see if I can come up with anything else that you can look for. But it sounds like you've, you've really dug the deep into this one to get it done correctly. Mm. Well, let us know what you find, Chris. We'll see if we can get you through this. C loss. Hi, without a big bore kit, how could you get a... Uh, 2023 Honda Grom faster. I'm 170 pounds. Oh, you lightweight. <laughs> I just want to keep up with traffic, not trying to race. Thanks for any help. Uh, I'm new with bikes. But yeah, you don't have to dive into a big bore kit to get more power. The initial stages of getting more power out of, out of the Grom. Um, go with the different uh, uh, air filtering system so it'll breathe a little bit easier. We did that on our 2018. And I'm sure the 23 probably has... Uh, the same parts available for it and go ahead and swap out your exhaust. Just those two things are going to wake it up a lot, especially the exhaust because the teeny tiny little tube that it's trying to breathe through is kind of anemic. So those two things, uh, it'll wake it up without having to go into any programming or anything like that or flashing the ECU or like we did having to uh, tune the uh, power commander that we, uh, we strapped to it. Joby, I'm not going to try to pronounce that last name. We're just going to go with it. 1996 Honda Foreman 400 4x4. It won't run smoothly when I give it a decent throttle. Idles well. OEM carburetor on it. I have followed the service manual procedure to set the fuel idle mixture screw. Uh, any suggestions on that? Well, you were messing with the... the, the um, the idle adjustment screw on it. And that's just doing what it's talking about, just the idle. What you're having a problem with is getting over that secondary. Uh, there's basically three jets. You've got your idle, you've got your mid-range, and then you got your top end. I think your problem lies in that, that transfer there, that jet number two, that uh, you're having a hard time for it to get over. So I would say open that car back up and make sure your secondary jet is not plugged up, nor the uh, the passageways inside inside of the carburetor, especially given uh, its age. That may be what's choking it down a little bit. So it's definitely going to be carburetor. I don't think this is an adjustment. I think this is a stop. It's stopped up somewhere, and it doesn't want to get over that transition part. I'm fairly certain that the uh, the four room and four hundred it has the three jets that I'm talking about instead of just the two. Uh, oh, 
Yeah, we are working on a, a new bike. That one over there, Tracy was here a few weeks ago and we started uh, some real basic stuff on it, but I think we did like 10 initial videos on it, but those will start coming to you as she has time to edit. Oh, uh, John, uh, Dale, John, please help. Okay. Uh, you've got, oh, 2003 Honda Goldwing is overheating. I have, you have to give me some more. Oh, I have changed the uh, thermostat, water pump, water temp sensor, and no leak fan works. ECU is recessed. What else could be the big thing? All right. And you're dealing with a, uh, an O3. All right. So she is 20. 20 years old, so she can almost drink on her uh, by herself or legal to drink. I would think you're going to need to do a radiator flush on it, not just a uh, or a clean and a flush. And we did one on a, um, I think it was a Kawasaki KLR, and we used a uh, a chemical. I think it was just from Peak to where we we filled it up, let it sit, and then flushed it out. And it sounds like your your uh, your uh, radiator may be a little bit stopped up. So I would do that first. Now, if she's still overheating, well, after you put it back together, um, go ahead and do a pressure test on the system just to make sure that you are you don't have the beginnings of any type of um, head gasket failure, which sometimes can uh, manifest itself in, uh, in overheating issues because it'll actually blow exhaust gases into the radiator uh, or into the cooling system and then overheats it. But anyway, I, I think you may just have stopped up radiators. Uh, uh, yeah, there's two on the, on, the, uh, on the gold wing. So I would say, let's do a flush and then see what she does next. And if it still doesn't, well, you probably have a lot of crap that comes out of there, but if it's still looking rough, you may want to consider replacing the radiators, especially given that they're 20 years old. And uh, that's one of the, downsides if you don't go through your radiator flush or at least replace the fluid every I think it's either three or five years you start getting a bunch of buildup in there and then eventually it chokes it down and that may be what has happened to yours all right and there was one in the middle Marty Turner I have an 07 Polaris Sportsman 800 it was burning oil for a while hmm. fouls the plug pretty quickly after cleaning it Hopeful it was valve seals causing the oil usage, but now thinking the, re, uh, the rings, your thoughts. We said it was burning for oil for a while. Usually uh, machines, they just don't fix themselves. Now what you might have been experiencing is if you ever flipped it over, it may have spit some oil out through the, uh, the vent line going into your air cleaner and then it was pulling that into the engine. Might, might have been what's going on. Take a peek in your air box, make sure they're in a nice little layer of oil down at the bottom of it and see what's going on. And yes, that would, that would uh, cause it to foul plugs pretty quickly. But hey, if um, you need to go further into it, trying to discern if it's A or B, go ahead and do a leak down test. That'll point you in the right direction as to whether you've got valves and or seals leaking versus um, uh, rings are starting to go. All right, we answered that one. All right, and he gave you the coolant flush. Outrageous penalty, how's it going? Hi John, in the cooling system, how do you check if the coolant is circulating upward to the fan? If not, what is the part that pumps the coolant in a Brute 750? My concern is uh, my coolant looks brand new after a year, and I'm worried it, it doesn't circulate. Oh, boy. Uh, if, if you've been running it for a year, it's circulating. Um, you can't really trace it, uh, per se. Um, the way I do it is using one of those little heat guns, and I follow it, you know, going around the system just to make sure it makes it to the uh, the the top of the radiator at X temp, and then when it exits down at the bottom, it should be 20 to 30 degrees cooler, and somewhere in that average as far as the temperature differential. But yeah, having one of those little infrared heat guns, that is the key to life. <laughs> it's probably the most important diagnostic tool I think I own, well, other than a, a multimeter. Paul Gravinsky, how's it going, Paul? 
Uh, we arrived a little late to the ball again. Better late than never, I always say. Lots of good questions. Again, what about a thermostat on the goal wing? Is it opening? Well, good good mention, Paul. I think he replaced that. And But, hey, I've replaced it. Had, very seldom happens you put in a, a part that is faulty. This may be one of those cases. So, you know, give it a shot. Make sure that uh, using that temp gun I'm talking about, trace out what's going on in, in, your, uh, in your system. I mean, if, like I said, if you don't see a big temperature change in between here and here on your radiator, well, chances are it's not circulating or it's not drawing out the heat as it should be. Boy, they are giving it a fit out there. Can't wait to go back and uh, re-listen to this or re-watch this since it's see just how loud it was. Hopefully, y'all haven't been bothered by it. Well, all right, guys. 325. I caught up with you again. <laughs> all right, kids. I think I'm going to call it a week. Head to the barn, so to speak. Doing work at the house tomorrow. I think I'm going to swap out the sink in the, in the kitchen. Doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> Soon-to-be wife wants a, uh, a stainless one in there. Undermount. Should be fun. <laughs> Piece of cake. Well, all right, guys. Uh, head over to partsilla.com. Go to that uh, initial landing page. Enter to win that Kimco ATV throne. Why not? Even if you don't own an ATV, just plop it on a, in the ottoman in your house. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for coming in and spending a little time with us, especially shopping with us at partzilla.com. It makes all of this possible, especially the new building that they're, uh, or that new space that they're starting to build out for me next week. Can't wait to show you all that. It's going to, it is so cool. Well, once again, everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will see you next Friday at three. Y'all take care.